everyone. My name is Ramon Barco from Sydney, Australia. I'm going to speak today about femoropopliteal CTA crossing, giving you a step-by-step -step guide. These are my disclosures. CTOs are characterised by having a fibrous proximal cap that is sometimes very difficult to traverse with a guide wire. There is heavily calcified atheromatous plaque, of course. And there is a less fibrotic distal cap that can sometimes be used to our advantage. It also has micro channels, which we can use to our advantage by engaging them using a, a low profile guide wire. The guide wire engages using the tip and then is drilled through the atheromatous plaque, hopefully in a transluminal plane, but of course sometimes we go subintimal. We make a very fine one millimeter, 30 degree angle at the tip of a hydrophilic coated guide wire. This is the best way of tackling a CTO. For the rest of my talk, in the interest of time, I'm gonna focus very much on the access approaches to cross femoropopliteal CTOs. I use an up and over approach in only very few patients. Those are patients with obesity, those that require treatment of a common femoral artery or ipsilateral iliac inflow, lesion at the same time, or the fourth group is those with a short common femoral artery and a flush SFA occlusion. For all other cases, I use an anti-grade ipsilateral common femoral artery access. This is because it's fast, it gives improved pushability, and allows us to use devices with shorter shaft lengths. So we place a short sheath in the common femoral artery and then we do our best to cross in an anti-grade direction. But of course, sometimes this is impossible and this is where retrograde crossing becomes really important. So let's go through a couple of retrograde access. The first one is for a proximal SFA lesion, a CTO. It should be used in conjunction with an anti-grade access, of course, which is usually ipsilateral downhill. Patients are positioned supine with the hip externally rotated and the knee slightly flexed an immediate approach is taken to the above knee popliteal puncture. You can do this with roadmap guidance or ultrasound depending on your preference. The whole idea here is we want to get as close to the CTO as possible to give us the best pushability. If the CTO extends down to the level of the knee joint, you can do this in the below knee popliteal segment using a very similar technique with a similar patient positioning. Once we have access, you can use a sheath in these larger arteries, and then you can use a combination of catheters and wires to traverse the lesion from retrograde, which is usually quite straightforward and re-entry not nearly as difficult as when you're coming from an anti-grade approach. Once you achieve re-entry, you snare or you externalize that wire through the proximal sheath so that you have a through and through wire access. You then go on to pre-dilate, and then use your choice of stents or drug-coated technology to revascularize the lesion. Sometimes a puncture of the tibial arteries is required to revascularize the FEMPOP segment, and these slides here show the position of the C-arm that's best used to puncture each of the individual tibial arteries. Here you see the position for the anterior tibial, which is completely parallel with the lower extremity to splay the bones. The perineal shows a slight ipsilateral oblique angle so that you could skirt the fibula and the posterior tibial is best done with the c-arm at a completely perpendicular angle to the lower extremity. Here you see us puncturing the proximal third of the anterior tibial artery in a straight segment and you see the oblique angle of the c-arm that's in parallel to the lower extremity to splay the tibia and fibula. Proximal calf artery punctures are really useful for popliteal CTOs if you're going to take one of these on, it's useful to have a long sheath as close to the CTO as possible from above. You can use a forefront sheath if the calibre of the tibial artery is sufficient, and these can easily be sealed at the end of the case with a blood pressure cuff being inflated for 20 minutes. This is an example of a tough calcified popliteal CTO. Here we've punctured the proximal AT, and you can see that nice CTO angle on the guide wire. We've had to use balloon stabilization because this was a really tough lesion to cross and needed the extra oomph that the balloon would provide. 
And here you see the final angiographic result after um, uh, multiple balloons to really dilate up the region and then apply drug coated balloon technology to that zone of target. If you don't succeed from a simple retrograde puncture, um, there are four options that you can then go to. The first is the CART technique or combined anti-grade retrograde tracking. Here what you do is you inflate a balloon from the distal retrograde access. And the idea here is you're trying to make a space with which you can re-enter from above, so joining the two wires assisted by the balloon. This this can be done in reverse as well. This is called the reverse cart, and the only difference here is the balloon is inflated from above. If that fails, the next step in my algorithm is the double balloon technique. We use a balloon from below and above, and here you're aiming to melon seed those two balloons against each other to really open up the membrane between the two channels. And if all else fails, you can use the needle reentry system where a balloon is inflated from below. Then a needle-based re-entry device such as an Outback or Pioneer catheter is taken from above. The needle used to penetrate into the balloon itself, followed by a wire. And then you have through and through access. I'm going to go through a few less common approaches now. The first one is puncturing through an occluded SFA stent. This is not an uncommon scenario. It's quite simple to puncture these stents using a 19 gauge entry needle under fluoroscopic guidance. You can then flip the tube 90 degrees to make sure you're within the lumen of the stent. And then I use a stiff guide wire from below to re-enter at the proximal portion of the occluded stent. Once the wire is externalized, the catheter is brought down from above and that wire to re-enter and then follow to set up a a stiffer wire that can be used for the initial pre dilatation. You can also do retrograde access of the profunda, which is quite useful for a flush profunda occlusion at the proximal end. I always use this in conjunction with a contralateral up and over access sheath, and I puncture usually under roadmap, but sometimes under ultrasound guidance depending on the size of the leg. I use a micro needle to puncture, and then I use the Cook micro sheath system attaching a check flow valve, which can be used then to do angiograms from a retrograde access, and we can use wires and some crossing catheters through that check flow valve. Once crossed from a retrograde fashion, the wires externalized and taken through and through in the standard method, as you can see here, and then we go about performing an antigrade revascularization. This case shows a double profunda system. And what we've done here is uh, using this retrograde technique, go on to perform sequential ballooning of each of the profunda. You can see here the first image, rewiring of the more proximal branch, which was then ballooned, and then kissing balloons here at the origin of the double profunda to achieve an excellent angiographic result. So I'm going to conclude there by saying that treating CTOs requires a good knowledge of equipment, including guide wires and crossing catheters. You need to take your time to pre-plan your approach, just like any complex endovascular intervention. And you need to consider early transition to retrograde wire tracking when an anti-grade approach has been unsuccessful. Thank you for your attention.